What it do, Flight Crew? FTC. Flight Team, stand up! Why you lie? It's July. Hey, man, we got the official reactions between Steph, Shep, Look at Curry, man. And Draymond Green, Green, Green to uh, play leaving Golden State. And then we got the man AM Hoops giving an actual more in-depth, detailed insight scoop on why the Warriors was not able to bring play back. Let's show you up. After being drafted by the Golden State Warriors in 2011 and playing for them ever since, free agent Klay Thompson is leaving the Bay and heading to Dallas to play for the Mavericks next so season awkward. on a three-year, $50 million deal. And with that being said, his fellow Splash Bro, Steph uh, Curry, left a heartfelt farewell tribute uh, and message man. on his... Oh, that hurts, man. I wish Clay could have at least stayed, you know, and just stayed a warrior till he retires. But, you know, given the circumstances, you know, that's why, like, in a way, I'm still a little bit salty and mad about it, but not something to where I, like, want to bash him. Because at the end of the day, guys, like, another thing you also got to remember, bro, this guy had a whole ACL, ACL, uh, MCL knee injury or whatever torn back in 2019 that's literally career ending he wasn't even supposed to like return to basketball right after that he did we won another championship um and then like on top of that the other championships we won in like the 2016 17 18 era and shit like that bro like it man it's just tough man and i already know like curry definitely didn't take this like the best way like in terms of just like emotional wise bro um it sucks, man. I wish I, I honestly wish Clay could have just stayed until he retired, man. It doesn't feel right at all, man. It doesn't feel right. Like I've had so many friends, um, you know, so many people ask me, like even like personally myself, like how do I feel, you know, what I'm saying about the Clay situation. I say the same answer every single time. I wish he could have just stayed, you know, what I'm saying a warrior, man. It's just like one of those things because you can tell Draymond is gonna stay a warrior, you know, what I'm saying obviously Curry's gonna stay a warrior his entire career. It just would have made. It, it been a little bit more legendary to the dynasty overall to, to 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 be there from the dynasty from the start to the peak of it you know what i'm saying and until the end man um but like i said all good things come to an end and obviously clay did this for a more of a career longevity factor because you know like texas and stuff like that he's gonna be able to save a lot more money over the years with the taxes and stuff and he probably honestly may be low key. I don't know. I, I some people have, I've peep from over the years have said that like Clay Thompson. Because if you actually like look behind the scenes, sometimes Clay actually likes and fucks with the Bay a lot. He usually is like bike riding and stuff, or I think I believe he'd be fishing and stuff around. I don't know. Maybe do you guys think? Because I I want to believe that isn't he like actually like from the Bay like overall uh, before he even would like join the Warriors. Um, so maybe he just may want a new, like, whole change of scenery and everything, because, you know, Texas is also known for, like, having, like, a, like, a family type of, it's still, you feel me, you can get some good bread out there in Texas, don't get it fucked up now, and they got, like, that's the land of the hustlers and stuff like that, and just also entertainment and great food over there, of course, uh, but also, it's a good family-oriented um, state, too. So maybe Clay's getting into that father era. Does Clay have any kids? I've never seen him with... No, 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 I'm, I'm tripping. I'm, I would be lying about that. He did have a, one, a, a, a celebrity chick, I think. I think. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was it a rapper-singer chick? I don't know. But I don't know, man. It, maybe it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of those factors boiling down, man. So this sucks, man. I can't even believe this is going on. Just three days after this happened, I still can't believe it, bro. It's still, like, processing, done. IG story. I will. I ain't gonna lie. I will stand on this though. One thing I will not tolerate. One thing I will not tolerate. And one thing, bro, come back to this video if it does happen. One thing I will not motherfucking tolerate. If Clay, like, let's say hypothetically, like any game, it don't matter if it's a regular season or the playoffs. If Clay, like, let's say, goes on a hot streak and scores like five straight threes and starts talking shit against the Warriors, oh no, bro, I'm flaming this nigga for an hour. You, you, Clay Thompson, you hear that shit right there, right? You know, just keep it humble. You know what I'm saying? Keep it cool. Don't be talking. You can talk anything to any other team. I don't care. But when it's the Warriors, bro, you have to bow down to my glorious king, Steph Chef. Look at Wardell Curry, man. Don't disrespect them. You start going off on the scoreboard or anything like that, bro. There's no way in hell you are allowed to talk any type of mess. Because I have noticed that sometimes with past NBA players, when they leave like a team they've been with for like the last five to eight years, and they go on like a 30 or 40 point game, they talk crazy. But at the given defense for the other players I'm talking about, they're obviously not in the same, like, spectrum in terms of, like, the chemistry Clay has provided with the Warriors. And it was a little bit toxic for the other players, so they have a right to do that. But, right, Clay, the Warriors have treated you nothing but good. Obviously, with, like, the you going 0-10 and you not showing up to certain games, 
they flamed you a little bit and even me. But, like, overall, like, real Warriors fans fuck with you heavy, bro. So, I, that's one thing you got to keep in mind, bro. Like, keep it humble. If you, the time you return to Golden State or you play against Golden State, you know what I'm saying? Just play chill basketball. You get a 50-point game. Dap everybody up still. Don't be talking shit, saying this and that. But that's what my With 30 thing, photos of saying. them together and then saying, gonna miss you, Clay. Even though we won't finish the journey together, what we did will never be done again. Couldn't have imagined a better run with you and Draymond Green. Change the whole Bay Area. Change the way the game is played. Killer Clay at the center of it all. Thank you for everything, bro. Go enjoy playing basketball and doing what you do. Splash Bros for life, my guy. Wow, man. Class act by Curry right there, man. That's why he's the number one ball player of all time right now, man. It's like, and life, you can tell. Guy. You can also tell, like, I don't also Killer know Clay. that if you guys know it, like, there's nothing wrong with having it. Because even, like, I have it sometimes, like, the, the the point of, like, you know, with everything, like, where I'm at in, like, like life. Like, having a PR, like, PR training and stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. But you can actually genuinely tell that, like, this was not a PR message. Like, this is just straight from the heart and everything like that. So, much respect to Curry with that. Um, all right, so next, uh, we got uh, Draymond Green emotional reaction to Klay Thompson joining the Dallas Mavericks. I want to guess this is from Draymond's podcast. Yes, yeah, from his podcast. Before so. we hear Draymond's reaction to Klay Thompson signing with the Mavs, this is actually what Steph Curry posted on his story along with that. a whole bunch of photos. He said he's going to miss Klay. Even though we won't finish the journey together, what we did will never be done again. Couldn't have imagined a better run with you and Draymond. Change the whole Bay Area. Change the way the game is played. Killer Klay at the center of it all. Thank you for everything, bro. Go enjoy playing basketball and doing what you do. Splash Bros for life, my guy. But here is Draymond's reaction to Klay leaving the Warriors for Dallas. There's been a lot of crying, I'm sure, around the world, around the Bay. You know, uh, Mark and Klay's exit. 13 years in the Bay. I don't really know how I feel about it. Clay told us last week. I don't know who all he told, but I know he talked to me. Pretty sure he talked to Steph last week. And he just kind of was like, yeah, man. Like, you know, just kind of started talking through the years. Like, been great. What we've done is so special. Like, you know, you and Steph, my brother's friend. And, and the conversation just kind of starts with small talk. And, like, you're kind of just prepping yourself. Like, man. Get me there. Like, I know it's coming. Like, you're enjoying the conversation, but yet, it's kind of one of those moments where, like, somebody, like, building you up. Before they get you to blow, they just kind of build you up. And that's kind of what I was feeling. I was headed to my daughter's recital. So I wasn't able to go as in-depth to the conversation as maybe I would have, which I think also was kind of a good thing for me because it, one thing I think when Clay told me, I was just able to listen, you know, and it wasn't like a, yo, we could finish like this, or like, you should rethink this. It was just like, wow, like, all right, like, congrats, bro. Like, I'm happy for you. That's dope. You know, to obviously reassure that that, that changes nothing for us. It changes the basketball court, obviously. But the relationships, they, they are what they are. They are forever. The connection. Man, Clay really left us, man, for Donakick and Kyrie, and that's act like they're not superstars as well. But, man, that's crazy, man. Like, Clay. Oh. And the bond, even as far as all of us being mentioned together, like that, that is forever. That that will never change. I don't know. I have I haven't really been able to process the feelings this morning, or not even this morning. Maybe earlier today. I think I might have dropped a couple tears, a tear two. You just oh, kind of sitting there and thinking, and then I came across Steph's story and like saw the pictures, and it was very interesting to me because when I was going through Steph's story, like. I, I went through it a couple times and it was just like, it was crazy to me how many of the pictures that he posted that I was also in. And so seeing that was like, man, I could just kind of take you back. Like it taking me back to the beginning though. Like when it all started and none of us really knew that it would end up being this, you know, what it became. And just going through that, you know, it was very interesting to see, like I said, how many of those I was in because I don't put myself in the same category with them two. Them two, for me, are, like, here, like, out of the frame. Like, they're, they're here. And so I dropped a couple of tears just throughout the day. Not even necessarily exactly looking at the story, but I like to keep things the same. I like things to stay the same. And this, this, this sucks for me. This part of the, this time of year always sucks because you build relationships with people. And then, like, out of nowhere, they're just gone. And... Out of nowhere being gone for us is crazy because you spend most of your time with these people. Like, you spend pretty much 
the better part of nine and a half months seeing these people daily. And then like out of nowhere, it just ends. It's a very, it's always been a very weird thing for me. And so then this one hits like a much, like, like much deeper, right? Like way more close to home because in a sense it disrupts home. Like what we've known as home for the last 12 years for me, that looks way different now. Wow, man. Hey, I mean, Draymond said it right there, man. This is some sad stuff. Um, what do you guys have to say about this, that especially Warriors fans? All right, next up, uh, last but not least, got AM Hoops um, with the uh, last video. The Warriors did Clay Thompson dirty. Let's see his take on it, or maybe he actually might have some information on what exactly the Warriors about. The Warriors failed Clay Thompson, so he had to leave. Why? Well, before the season, they offered him two years, $48 million. He ended up taking less money per year on the Mavericks. In fact, dude could have had a four or year deal elsewhere but said no i'm going with luca and Kyrie. it was obvious he didn't want to return to golden state after what they did but first the sign and trade so he took less money and left it was the mavs get clay the hornets get josh green the dubs got a 16 million dollar trade exception and two second round picks but why did he choose dallas for bro it's crazy looking at this at the end of the bro two second round picks for clay thompson bro like i understand he's at the end of his career but bro the Mavericks should have at least gave us, like, DJ Gafford or something like that, right? Like, isn't that a lot more fair? Like, at least two first-round picks, the Gafford dude, um, and then maybe, like, the Hornets could have gave us, um, uh, like, somebody off the bench. Who's that three-point shoot, Devontae Graham, dude? Like, they could have got something like that. Like, why are we, like, come on, man. 50 million. The four year teams had space, like Pistons and the Jazz, but Clay wants to compete for a championship. Mavs just made the finals, but he also wants to start. The Lakers wanted him, but there is a ton of baggage playing with LeBron James. I mean, if Clay had an off night, he would take the blame, which happens to like every LeBron teammate. In Dallas, there's less pressure, and they wanted him. LeBron said he would take a pay cut for a short list of players Clay, James Harden, Jonas Valanciunas, or DeMar DeRozan. But the Mavs said, You are the only one we want. LA rarely misses on free agents to Dallas, but this time it worked. And after what the dubs did, he needed to feel important. But what I find very weird is telling myself to kick bad habits, but go out with people who pull out their bad habits, start using it, and I'm like, it's just a little bit, can I borrow yours? Then before you know it, it's back. Why does that happen? Well, what if I told you there is a habit alternative that you can take out of your pocket instead? Today's sponsor is Fume. It's for various people doing housing custom face is free Fume. Starting five is Luca Kyrie Clay, PJ Washington, and Daniel Gafford with a bench including Derek Lively and replacing Josh Green with Quentin Grimes plus Najee Marshall. But honestly, this is overrated from a basketball standpoint. Clay is not the player he used to be. And the defense of Luka, Kyrie, and Clay, not good. Yes, he is great at catch and shoot. I mean, last year he scored 18 points a game on 39% from deep, but 219 catch and shoot threes, second most in the league. Imagine Luka playing pick and roll with Gafford and Lively. Clay will eat, but it is a totally different system. The Dubs are a motion offense designed to punish defenders off ball. The Mavs are all about Luka. It will be an adjustment from the only team he has ever known. And Clay has been awful the last two postseasons. They are not getting 2016 Clay Thompson. It's only a big deal because he left the Warriors. It's like Scottie Pippen leaving Michael Jordan, or better yet, any of the great big threes breaking up. Steph, Clay, and Draymond won four titles together, tied for the most by an all NBA trio with Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Monty Ginobili. But six finals is the most by any all NBA trio. In terms of playoff wins, third behind the Spurs and 80s Lakers, but none of it happens without Clay. And if you think about it, he was the perfect teammate for Steph Curry. I mean, Steph needed another guard with size who didn't even need to dribble, let alone handle the ball, and he didn't crave the spotlight. Clay's attitude was so chill and laid back, it was perfect to be Steph's number two. His best moments include a 37 point third quarter in January 2015, or 41 points and a then record 11 threes in game six of the 2016 West Finals. Bro, really had so a where did it go point third quarter, man. That's along, and why are the Warriors to blame. Well, in 2019, Clay tore his ACL in the finals, but the Dubs paid him a five-year max contract anyway. He then tore his Achilles and was out for two and a half years of his prime. But that wasn't his fault. They offered him the money knowing he was out. What was he supposed to do, turn it down? But when he returned, things weren't the same. Clay started slow the last two years and was awful in the playoffs. It got so bad, he was benched for rookie Brandon Pazinski. But during the play-in, his final game as a duck. See, like, thinking about shit like that now, too, like, I, I think it also comes back to a respect factor, bro. Because I did notice, if you if you were a Warriors fan and we peeped a lot of these games, we, we watched all the Warriors games, what we were talking about in terms of, like, highlights and stuff. 
Um, but like Steve Kerr was doing a lot of questionable rotations. All right, like there was some games that like you know what I'm saying, like. Kamunja will be starting a lot of minutes and then not playing a lot of minutes, especially like in a, a like in, in clutch games where we need him to play. And then I do remember that Pradonsky definitely was like, come on, like that is low key disrespectful as shit. That is a slap in the face. You know what I'm saying? Despite Clay was being on a bad run, we're not gonna act like he was not playing like dog shit. But bro, like a legitimately future Hall of Famer being benched by a first year in. It's not going to offend him or anything. I know because he's I'm a straight Warriors fan and he's on my team, so I'm not trying to offend players like that. But let's be honest, Pradonsky's never going to smell a Hall of Fame, bro. He's never going to make an all star team. He's a nice role player and I'm very happy that he's on the squad and he provides great, um, you know what I'm saying, all types of all around basketball, bro. But guys, I can drop him off 11 2 on 1 V1s. Like, that's like disrespectful to start him some games and stuff over Clay. So I feel like when it comes to like things bigger picture other than like money, I think little things like that kind of like turn Clay off to like coming back with the Warriors, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because like picture like. Obviously, Clay's nowhere near like Michael Jordan, but just like imagine Michael Jordan getting benched by like who was like on the Wizards like back in the day who I can remember. Um, damn. Um, I mean obviously Kwame Brown, but Kwame Brown they didn't play the same positions. I mean that's like that's like the coach being like, oh like let me bench you for this this new rookie that's a high uh draft pick uh for Kwame Brown or whatever. Obviously they don't play a pay some business. But I'm trying to give an example. Like you know in the back of your head you're just gonna be looking like damn bro like nigga I'm about to be making an all star I mean a, a Hall of Fame in like two or three years. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm an icon in the league and just because I have like five bad games you don't sit up here and bench me for somebody like. See, I don't know, man. To me personally, I think these are like one of the little reasons why he just doesn't want to uh, play the words. Clay went 0 for 10 in a loss to the Kings. Then the no wonder they only offered two years, 48 million. But that's where it gets tricky. The reason Clay said no is they had just given Draymond a hundred million dollar contract after punching his own teammate. Let alone what he did this year. Clearly an off-court distraction. They gave Andrew Wiggins a decent deal, but Jordan Poole, 128 million. I am sorry, but given what we now know about Poole, can you imagine how disrespected Clay must have felt being offered a third of that? Oh, but Clay's washed. The yep. crazy thing is, though, like, it, that is true, though. Like, because in a way, NBA sometimes is a finesse. Jordan Poole played absolutely amazing that first year. Now it's just like, I don't know if he just doesn't try on the Wizards or what. And he just got, like, that big boy contract, you know? Uh, so. But there wouldn't be so much on him if the Warriors had run their team right. The same day Clay tore his Achilles, the Warriors drafted James Wiseman, number two. Such a bad pick. That is franchise mismanagement. Then Jonathan Kaminga and, and Moses And also Moody. that franchise mismanagement. A lot of um, uh, cool Warriors fans have also been, you know what I'm saying, letting me know that also if you peep behind the scenes, with like the staff, like bro, the war. I said this too when we was talking about like Paul George going to the Sixers. Like, I don't get it. Like the staff on the um, like who does these like pickups and stuff is just questionable as hell. Like we should have been in no position to draft James Wiseman. We should have gotten Lamella Ball. We literally could have gotten Lamella Ball. Like we literally gotten. J like I don't even understand how the hell you make that big of a mistake. I don't care how good. J like unless James Wiseman was averaging thirty fucking points in college, bro. I don't understand why NBA teams still, or unless a, a big man that's like seven foot has like a nice actual consistent three-pointer and they're fast and they can dribble the ball like a jockey draw wet bananas. Like, I don't see what the hype they see. This isn't early 2000s anymore, bro. You know, like there were so many big men that have gotten picked because they thought that they was just gonna be super dominant and stuff that I can go on the Santa Claus list of. And I, and, I, and, I, and it's crazy because even like even back then, like in a foresight, like, I, I mean, bro, People like Hashim the Beat and stuff like that, bro. Like, absolute top three fucking busts of all time. Buddy's like 7'6". Bro, I remember in the early 2000s, they said that nigga was going to be another Yao Ming, bro. Like, just absolute disrespect to Yao Ming, bro. I can drop that dude 1v1 off with one hand tied behind my back. You know? So, it's like... When I looked at that back in the day, I'm like, bro, I look, I'm like, bro, this dude can barely make mid-range shots, let alone can't make a three. He's weak as hell in the post. He weighs about 110 pounds and a seven-footer. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and the list goes on and on for big man that they just had so much confidence in drafting. I don't understand what is, like, the big hype with, like, especially, like, the Warriors' office. Like, they just love drafting big men. This isn't even the first time. I believe, like, even the year before Curry, they drafted, like, a big man, if, I don't, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so like, I don't know, man, we really could, we, bro, we could have gotten LaMelo Ball 
Bro, and crazy thing is, LaMelo Ball would have been like five times. He's obviously still lit and not he's not one of the phases of the NBA just yet because, you know, he, he's an injury prone so far. But he's definitely, you know, on the way up there. And I feel like LaMelo Ball would have way of a better five times career and a lot more exposure with the Warriors in the offense we could have got into. Like, I don't know why we didn't pick him. 6'7", six, 6'8", six, bro. Like, come on, man. That's crazy. See, like, even that type of stuff, like, Bad moves in the offseason, bad moves in the draft. Bro, Clay not going to want to deal with that. Though, the motherfucking Dallas Mavericks, and they just had like two first round picks, bro. They just went to the finals. You know, seeing stuff like that, and then you see the Warriors, they didn't have a pick until like the, the third to last pick in the second round. It, it's just like, and we didn't even make the playoffs, like alone. You feel me? Like, bro, come on, man. What are y'all niggas doing behind the scenes, bro? Y'all got to get it together in the staff or something, bro are good, but they're not playoff performers yet, and they might never be. Jordan Poole dropped off, Wiggins and Kevon Looney, Draymond's a mess. So the Dubs missed the playoffs the same year that Clay was up as a free agent. Talk about bad timing. If he was up a year before, like Draymond. That made is this bad timing too, my bad on the pop. But like, if I feel like too, if we made the playoffs and at least got to the second round, Clay would 100% stay. Clay's low-key also jumping a gun and, and trying to play like a, like a ahead of time gambling type shit, like where he's trying to like, Put the money on basically the Warriors and like, hey, I predict that my team, Warriors, is not going to make the playoffs for the next two or three years, most likely, when that's not going to be the case. Everybody knows the motherfucking Warriors are going to the championship in 2025 uh, next season. So he really made a bad choice right here. But Second round. I think you tried to jump that, the they just won the finals. Right then all of a sudden they lose in the play and Clay's a free agent. They're like, whoa, whoa, we can't just be paying people. Why didn't you say that with Draymond or Wiggins or Poole? I mean, don't they have flaws? So they told Clay he was not a priority this offseason. They would spend their money and he could have what was left over. Wow, what a slap in the face. Clay then went to Steph and told him not to force this. Do not go to the owner and tell them to re-sign me. Clay knew that if Steph did that, it would probably work, but he wanted the offer to be genuine and it never came. So it's sad that the end of Clay is so bitter. And yeah, he's obviously declined and he's got an ego, but the dubs made so many mistakes along the way that made keeping Clay not worth it. So what does Golden State do now? Well, reports say that they will pivot to Laurie Markman after missing on Paul George. Laurie is a skilled seven footer in the middle of his prime at 27 years old. The definition of what can happen in a good system. He was underrated for years before getting to Will Hardy in Utah. Now he is an all-star who can shoot, create his own shot, and defend in the post. The problem is competition. Teams interested are the Spurs, Kings, and Warriors, at least. If we can get Mark Cannon, I'm not going to lie, that would be a solid replacement for Clay. Not even going to lie. That man, Mark Cannon, can dunk. He's 6'10 and a half, can play defense, can shoot the three. He fits so well in the Warriors offense. Yo, who are these other teams essentially? Petition. Teams interested are the Spurs, Kings, and Warriors. Spurs and Kings, back away, bro. Back away. Back the fuck away. At least. Danny Ainge runs the Jazz, and he is known as a tough negotiator who wants to fleece teams in a deal. So what would it actually take? Will the Warriors get marketing for Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, and two first round? Hell no! Nah! Hell nah! Hell nah! Don't do that trade. That's a ripoff, bro. Come on, man. Nah, man. We keep it Kamunja, dog. Nah, bro. And a first round pick, yo, yo, slow key, bro. I wish I could smack the shit out of the Jazz staff. If they really thought they can offer some bullshit like this, are you kidding me, bro? Like, see, it'll be stuff like this the Warriors will fall for. Like, no, that's a ripoff, bro. How do you want two first round picks? Mark Cannon is not worth that. No. And you want Kamunja and Moses? No. No. They try to play the Warriors like a fool, bro. Respects to Mark Cannon. He is a solid role player. But this dude's another person who's never going to smell the Hall of Fame, bro. He has decent jersey sales, especially over the last past season, I will admit. But that's all it's going to be, bro. He's not worth this. This is a trade that's something that's worth to get, like the Zach Levine dude that we were supposed to get. Like, see, that's another problem with the staff. Like, the fact that this is even an offer. Obviously, this is it hasn't gone through and hasn't even probably going to ever go through, hopefully. But, bro, this is just a straight ripoff. Like, how does the NBA not even step in and see this shit? This is a ripoff, bro. Kamuj is literally an all-star this upcoming NBA season. Moody and Moses is a cool casual. And then two first-round picks? Are you kidding me, bro? Because everybody knows, I feel like the next two drafts in a row is going to be fire. The 2025 draft next season is going to be fire filled with talent if everybody declares to go to the draft. And then if they don't declare to go to the draft, 
And then, of course, the 2026 season is going to be guaranteed a good draft selection. Fuck out of here, you know bro. What? Yeah, no. Sure. But Warrior fans need to learn two harsh truths or continue to suck. Number <laughs> one, you don't actually have a great young core. You just have a decent team that is propped up by Steph Curry and Draymond Green. Second, quality players are not cheap. Look at how much big trades cost these days. And this one against Danny Ainge and the Spurs and Kings will be expensive. And I know still- That's just bull, bro. That's bull. Like, like, like every other team I noticed, they're giving away players for half-eaten bags of chips, half-eaten apples, a half-eaten In-N-Out burger. But like when it comes to the Warriors, we got to give up everything in the kitchen sink. Like I don't make no oh, fucking fans sense. Fans in the comments will look at that trade and say, no way, that is way too much. I swear, those people are going to keep supporting John Vinkaminga until he's like 33 years old. Then they'll be like, yeah, we can go ahead and trade him. I don't think he's going to pan out. Also, I didn't include your 2025 first round pick in a great draft. I know the Jazz are going to ask for that, but the Dubs say no. Have these two over here just in case next season's a disaster. But yes, it is sad how Clay ended. He will have a statue outside of the arena. He might retire as a warrior years from now, but there is tons of Bro, blame to go around. that would be crazy, though. But what about Paul George? This man act That would be crazy, though. If Clay just comes back after this Dallas season and comes back for the next two years with the Warriors again, shit. Hey, man, overall, man, if you're a Warriors fan, how do you feel overall about the Clay uh, situation at this point? Have you already moved on from it? Is it at this point where you're just done talking about it? Honestly, this is probably my last time talking about this. Unless Clay comes out and himself has like a press conference or some type of like crazy speech about the Warriors and stuff like that. This is my last time reacting to it. There's really not much more we can really say about this. It is what it is at this point, man. I already said best of wishes to Clay and his family and stuff like that with Dallas and the rest of his NBA career. Um, but hey, we got to just move on from this point, man. We can't sit up here and dwell on the past. That's not going to get us to the finals.